It's Tuesday, April the 7th. So what was happening that Tuesday, the Tuesday of Holy Week in the ancient city of Jerusalem nearly 2,000 years ago, the week that Jesus would offer his life? Well, Tuesday was a very busy day. In fact, there are a lot of familiar stories in the Bible that probably come from Tuesday of that week. Jesus again returned to the temple in Jerusalem where thousands of people would congregate. It is the center of social life. And every day more and more pilgrims are showing up in the city as they get ready for the Passover feast that began Thursday uh, at sundown. Tuesday was a day of uh, a showdown with the religious leaders. There are so many things that happened, little stories that Jesus told. Uh, but I, I think of uh, Matthew 23, 24, and 25. Matthew 23 is a passage where Jesus uh, engages a long sermon uh, that denounces the religious authorities and the religious leaders of the day. He calls them blind guides. He calls them fools. Uh, he calls them whitewashed tombs. He spares no words here. Jesus is not hiding in a corner. Jesus is standing up in front of thousands of people and he's calling the religious leaders what they are. He is labeling the religious system of first century Judaism as a failed system that had completely missed the point about knowing God and experiencing God and having a relationship with God. This is the day Jesus will engage in a number of debates with the religious leaders. Debates, they will try to trick him about paying taxes. It's the day he will say, render to Caesar what is Caesar. They will try to trick him, the Sadducees will, about what will happen in the resurrection. And on and on. Jesus will turn the tables on them and ask them where John the Baptist got his authority. They won't be able to answer, and so Jesus won't answer their question about where his authority comes from. Because in his silence, the question is answered. Jesus' authority comes from God. The crowds love it. The religious leaders are embarrassed. And by the time Tuesday is over, there is no question. They will do anything they can to silence him. They must silence him. The crowds are growing. They're worried about a social disturbance. They're worried about a potential revolution. And they're worried about losing their own preeminent seats of authority. It's also the day when Jesus will be asked about the end of the age. And Jesus will speak to his disciples about the signs of the end time. And he will give them important teaching that prepares them for the future. Our focus passage today is Matthew 21 and verse 33. This is one of the stories Jesus told that day that infuriated the religious leaders. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He leased it to tenant farmers and went away. And when the time came to harvest fruit, he sent his servants to the farmers to collect his fruit. The farmers took his servants, beat one, killed another, stoned a third. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first group, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenant farmer saw the son, they said to him, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those farmers? He will destroy those terrible men, they told him, and lease the vineyard to other farmers who will give him fruit at the harvest. Jesus said, Have you never read in the Scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is what the Lord has done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. Whoever falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it falls, it will shatter him. When the chief priest and the Pharisees heard this parable, they knew he was speaking about them. In this parable, Jesus, in essence, gives a quick summary of Jewish history, that God had sent prophets, God had sent spokesmen, but it again and again, the people, the Jewish people specifically, but in a grand view, this is the story of human history. This is the story of human depravity that has rejected God and resisted His authority. And in the story, the owner of the farm eventually sends his own son, and the tenants in rebellion kill the son. Jesus, in telling this story, makes, us, makes it very clear he knows he's about to die. 
and he also equates himself as the Son of God, the one who has been sent by the owner of the vineyard. The religious leaders know that he's talking about them. They are the wicked tenants who are in rebellion. Jesus has come to tell us the truth about God, and you have a choice to make. Either you receive his authority because you know that God really owns it all, or we resist his authority and we make war against him. On Tuesday of that holy week, the religious authorities made their decision. They were going to resist Jesus and stop him at all cost. And that was Tuesday of Holy Week 2,000 years ago.